I want to make an apology to some people there who had a question about the age of accountability at the rapture. So I've delayed it for quite a long time. I want to apologize. As you all know, I'm only one man. <laughs> I'm so busy. So there's so many things I can't cover. There's so many topics I want to study and research. A lot of people keep insisting on this subject about the earth, this subject uh, about women, and this subject about... And I keep telling you guys, there's so many subjects I want to cover, but look, I mean, I'm only one man. <laughs> I can't cover everything. I can only cover as much as God allows and gives to me. So I hope you all understand that. Okay, so the age of accountability at the rapture. So that's a question. What is the age of accountability? So when are you accountable enough to be saved and to be raptured? So that's a big question in everybody's mind. So the key answer is this. Now this is a simple answer. The simple answer, and then because it's too simple, you might want to know a little bit more details. But let's cover the first, the simple answer. Simple answer is knowledge. Knowledge of the gospel. When they're able to grow up to a point where they understand what is right and wrong, and they are to, able to understand things of the gospel. Now, you got to realize this. When you're witnessing to children, it's not the same thing as witnessing to grown adults. So when you witness to grown adults, kids don't have to know all those complicated terminologies. No like salvation, redemption, justification, deity of Christ, uh, repentance, uh, confession for salvation. You, you don't have to do that. You got to make it very easy. You got to make it very easy because the thing is children have a different mindset. So here's the mistake people make. Some people make the mistake that, well, because my child is not at an age where he or she understands those theological terminologies of salvation, then they are not at the age of accountability. No, my advice is this. Do it as early as you can. Do it as early as you can. Because the key is once they have knowledge, knowledge, knowledge of the gospel. See? And I've led young kids to salvation, you understand. So look at Romans chapter 5. When are you imputed sin, right? When, are, when does God count you accountable for sin? Romans 5.13 For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when what? There is no law. So there is a first rule right there. The first rule right here whoop, is Romans 5.13 Now notice right here, Sin is not imputed when there is no law. See that? So until they have the law of understanding, because of my sin, I'm going to burn in hell. Until they have that kind of knowledge, then sin will be traced to their accountability. See? Until they know the serious consequences of what's right and wrong. Now let's look at Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. So remember this, sin is not accounted. Thus, you're not at the age of accountability. When what? There's no law, as that verse says. The law dictates on what's right and wrong, right? When they have a knowledge of what's right and wrong, then you got to tell them this. You got to tell them that because they understand what's right and wrong, there's a penalty for that after you die, which is a burning hell. After you die, you will burn in hell because of the wrong things you've done. Now, do you, don't you think that a child will understand that kind of language? They will certainly do. They will get that point. So, after that, then you got to tell them this. So, you need Jesus to save you, to take you to heaven. He will save you from hell. All you do is just believe, just believe his blood, his blood can take you to heaven. Now, a child can understand that much. 
See, all it takes is just believing like that. Now, look at Romans chapter 7. And then notice what the Bible says right here. In verse 7, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, what? I had not no sin, but by the law. See, until he knew the law, then he understood what sin was. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. So until he knew the law, then he understood what was right and wrong, and that's when he was held accountable for his sin. But sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was what? Dead. See that? So notice right here, sin is counted dead to the person. He's not... He's not held accountable in his sin. Sin is considered dead when he has no knowledge. Verse 9, For I was, what, alive without the law once. See that? They're alive in their salvation. Spiritually, they're alive if they have no law. But when the commandment came, once they knew the law, sin revived and I, what, died. Now you know they're dead in trespasses and sins. They're dead as a lost sinner. So once they know what's right and wrong. Now, we're going to look at Deuteronomy 2. Deuteronomy 2. Now the question is this though. The question is, at what age? The Bible never told you that. Do you know why? The Bible never tells you exactly what age because it wants you to know the knowledge. See that? Until you're at the age of knowledge. It all varies because you can be past 30 or 50 years of age and you don't have the knowledge of the gospel and accountability of what's right and wrong. You might say, oh, no, you do. No, there are poor people out there who suffered uh, mental illnesses, and you're saying that they're going to go to hell after they die? No, those poor people, the Lord understands their condition and will let them in heaven. Sometimes there are children who are slower to understand, too. So God's understanding God, so he doesn't put an age limitation here. He only puts a limitation on how much you know, what is right, and what is wrong. Now look at Deuteronomy 2. Well, I'm so worried about my kid. They might go to hell. Well, here's the thing. The Lord can be more gracious than you think. And I'm going to give you an example here. The Lord can be more gracious than you think concerning about age. And the Lord, He understands everybody's sinful condition. And He can let them in much more easier than you think. So let's look at the, the book of Deuteronomy. And actually, I'm in the wrong chapter. We're going to look at chapter 1. Excuse me, chapter 1. And look at verse 39. Deuteronomy 1.39. So we saw this as the first part. <clears throat> but then we come to the second part. God can be more gracious than you think. Deuteronomy 1.29. It says, uh, 39, what am I saying? It says, moreover, your little ones. See that? little children, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had what? No knowledge between good and evil. So they were the ones who entered the promised land with Joshua. The first generations died out. But what's the age here? Let's keep reading. <clears throat> they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the sea. Now, I don't know if you know this, but let's see how old they were at Numbers 14. huh? Let's look at how old they were. Go to Numbers 14. You know what the Bible says about these people who can enter into the promised land and they had no knowledge of what's right and wrong? 20 years and under. That is generous, right? That's really generous there. I mean, how many 20-year-olds do you know today who definitely has knowledge and they reject Jesus Christ blatantly and they don't care about Jesus Christ and the gospel? Look at Numbers chapter 14 and we're going to look at verse uh, 31. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. And verse 29, your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your no, whole number, who are the ones who are condemned, who can't enter the promised land? 
from 20 years old and upward which have murmured against me. So notice that the 20 year olds and upward, they were the ones rejected by God. But the ones who were underneath 20, they were the ones who were able to enter in. So Deuteronomy 139, Numbers 14, 29. Well then, is it safe to say that you don't need to get saved if you're 19 years old? No, it is definitely not safe to say because why? Romans 5 and Romans 7 says, you're held accountable for your sin when you had knowledge. But in this particular case, Numbers 14 and Deuteronomy 1, in that particular case, these people, what, had no knowledge. See that? God didn't say because they were 20 they can enter. No. God was saying because they had no knowledge. See that? The age just simply reflects as a sample of people of God being very gracious and generous of no matter how old you are, he can let you in if you had no knowledge. So that's a simple answer. But children, you gotta understand this, children are the easiest to get saved, thus you should give the gospel to children, not pro prolong it. If you prolong it and they're past the age of a child, do you know how hard it is to win them to Christ? Try to get them when they go to college, when they're all grown up. You think it's easy? Look at the book of Matthew 18, Matthew 18. That's why it's important to get them saved now you know why? Because Jesus know a child is simple-minded, innocent. So because simple-minded, they would easily believe in what God says rather than growing up to the age of an adult where they're lost in transgression and sin and they get brainwashed by the school system where they think that that's okay, that's okay. And then they're, they're already ingrained with the bias to reject the gospel. Now look at Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3. Matthew 18, 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as what? Little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this what? Little child. The same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So notice right here that it's got to be the age of a child is the best prospect to get saved. Is that what the verse said? Yeah, best prospect for salvation is children. So you should definitely tell your children how to get saved. Once they are able to have a little bit of the knowledge of what's right and wrong, and that there is a solution out of what's right and wrong, then you can tell it to them. You don't have to tell them all uh, hard terminologies and language, make it simple for them. Make it like a story, a simple storybook style. That's all you have to do. And then you'd be surprised how many of them could get saved after that. Here's the thing. I'll tell you one thing. Here's the age that I can tell you though, okay, from my personal experience with people who got saved. The youngest age, the youngest age I ever saw who got saved for salvation, I don't know of anything younger than this, is five years of age. I never seen anyone go younger than that in all my years in the ministry. So if they had five years old, my advice is this. If there are five-year-olds out there who got saved in the Lord Jesus Christ and understood the gospel, then there's going to be a good chance at your child too. So I'd recommend telling your child at that point. But if they can't understand, then don't get panicked about it. Because 2 Peter 3, 9, this one you should keep in mind. The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is merciful. He's not going to damn your six-year-old if that six-year-old cannot understand the gospel that you are presenting. God is merciful. The evidence was this one, right? Wasn't this really merciful? 20, uh, the age underneath 20 years old. So not 20 years and under. It should be under 20 years. Excuse me. Look how God is merciful in this case. So he's going to be merciful in your case too. So don't worry about that. Now, about being raptured, right? What's the age of accountability? The age of accountability, look at the book of 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. I stress so much on salvation. Do you know why? Because it's in salvation you know that they're raptured. Okay? Amen. Look at 1 Thessalonians Amen. 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. 
Salvation is the point, the main point, how you can know that they'll go to heaven. So your five-year-old will go to heaven once they have knowledge of the gospel. What if they didn't have knowledge of the gospel? Remember this. If they didn't have knowledge of the gospel, what? Sin is not accounted to them. So because sin is not accounted to them, God says he'd, what? Give them heaven, right? So there is no good reason for God not to allow them to come into heaven when he raptures them. So that's the age of accountability. The age of accountability is, this is the point, knowledge of the gospel. Whether they're 19 or even 50, if they didn't have the knowledge, God would let them in because sin is not accounted, imputed to them. Look at 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 Thessalonians 4. Here's a condition here. Verse 14, for if we, what? Believe that Jesus died and rose again. See, that's the prerequisite. That's the condition. Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will, what? God bring with him. See that? So that's a condition. And then you see verse 17, uh, 16 and 17, that's a rapture. See, that's a rapture. So that's why babies, they will get raptured. People who have a mental condition problem, they will be raptured. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ will be raptured. Amen. So, that, so that's the age of accountability right here. If you're worried, here's, again, here's my best advice. i never seen anyone beyond five. Once they're five, start witnessing. If they don't have that knowledge of the gospel, don't worry. Just believe what God says in his word. And in this case right here, wasn't he very merciful? In this case right here.